enlightened. It was so enlightened. I mean, I have to say that um, your consultation that you do with my buyers. So now I'm at the point where if we're taking on a new client, we immediately send them to you because we want to know that they go through your consultation, which is about maybe 45 minutes of their time on a Zoom with you guys. Mm -hmm. And and what the information you're giving them is so um, it just it's getting them clarity of what they're at so that when we come down to it, when we make an offer, a lot of the times we're making an offer with almost, you know, no need for an appraisal or a, or a loan contingency because you've taken them through such a deep process. We know that they will get along, that they will get, you know, that all of these things are going to happen. So in some ways, you know, um, I'm almost like I'm, I'm wary. I truly am wary if somebody comes in and says, oh, here's my pre-approval. I want to go, OK, good. Uh, where'd you get that? And they're kind of like, oh, well, we, you know, we, <laughs> we were online and we filled out a thing and this is the thing they gave us and we printed it out. And you're like, okay, um, let's get you a real one now. So let's go do that, all the process that you did. Now we're really going to do it. And then they're kind of like, oh my gosh, they're asking for all these things. It's like, yeah, we do this ahead of time because once we go into escrow, you're already partway there, you know, and that's just... And so part of that is just explaining that to somebody. But the other part of it is then when it's my turn, we find the house that they love. And it's after you've gotten them that far that I pick them up and take them and show them the house. And we end up saying this is the one they want. Now we have 10 other people that also want the same house. Right. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we have to go, OK, so this is what we have. We have the Cravoy team and this is their pre-approval. And I now I'm trying to sell them to the listing agent as to why the seller should go with them and feel confident about it. One of the great things about you guys is you actually make the call to the seller's agent, the listing agent, and say, this is what we know about these clients. They're ready to go. And that added bonus of another team member making the phone call but also the fact is you really do have them almost all the way there and there isn't going to be a doubt that also allows us to shorten the uh, the contingency contingency period. It also allows us to shorten the escrow period a lot of times. So they are really able to compete with all cash buyers in ways. But also the other part is um, it's kindness. It's about being easy to work with. And a lot of times people are picking agents like they just meet somebody and they say, well, they seem tough. I like them. But the truth is, you know, you want to pick somebody that's got a reputation for working this stuff out. And no matter what, we're going to work it out. We'll figure it out. We're not going to be hard nosed. We're not going to be, you know, and part of it as a buyer is understanding, you know, it's competitive, but it's not impossible. And I'm I, as a listing agent, I'm getting buyers that are sometimes saying, well, just forget the whole thing. And they walk away without even trying. So part of it is, do you have faith? in the people that are working for you or do you have fear? And if you're the kind of person that says, Oh, I'm not even going to try, then this is not the right time for you to buy a house. That's right. You're willing to say, uh, let's jump in. Let's try this. There's possibilities. I cannot tell you how many times I've had buyers who were literally the second person in line in a backup offer. And the first person started getting too nervous or whatever. And we move into the position and get the house for them. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have predicted that, but I always just say, hang in there. You don't know where this is going to lead. And sometimes mm -hmm. we get it for less money than the first offer, right? We see that all the time. Yep. So, well, and one of the things that you and I were talking about, which plays into exactly what you're talking about right now, is that, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you know, most people, you know, especially first time home buyers, like they don't really know what to think. You know, they know they want to buy a house or at least they think they want to buy a house, but they're being bombarded with info. Everybody's got an opinion, whether it's their coworker, their mother, their father, their crazy uncle. Somebody's got an opinion and they're all and most of them are wrong. Right. Like, So you have to be able to give uh, our, your clients. Uh, the education that is based on facts that are based yes. on real numbers, because if you can do that, you create trust. And if you create trust, now you have a client that is that they can sleep at night. Number one, they can confidently listen to 
their realtor to the Houston Group LA <laughs> and know that the, the, their realtor is going, it knows what they're doing and they're going to be able to do whatever is necessary, you know, within legally and within reason <laughs> to get that offer accepted, right? And, right. Then, and then once it's accepted, you know, getting your offer accepted is just one of the first steps. Then it's all about going through the process. So if you spend all the time up front, you know, getting that client prepared, whether it's, you know, because we were combing over their financials or whether it's we're, you know, going uh, doing a deep dive on their hopes and their dreams and their goals, whether it's, you know, being understanding of their timelines, whatever it might be, if you spend all that time at the beginning, it, it you, that comes through when that offer goes through, like, the, the client is more willing to do what you're asking them or what you think needs to be done. And the listing agent is feeling it. They know, they go, wow, this team really knows what they're doing. Now, I'm going to throw this back at you, Carol, because in addition to you being a buyer agent, you're also a listing agent. Mm -hmm. and, and I can tell you that one of the things I, I've often mentioned this in the last year and a half is that man, there it, with this market that we've had, it's never been clearer a, a really good agent from a uh, somebody who, you know, maybe just got started or maybe they just, it's not working for them because, you know, you put in an offer on a place. If you're a listing agent, you get in 15, 20 offers and most of the listing agents I talk to, they go, yeah, it's crazy. Like only four of those agents even called me. Right. They're just, people are just emailing offers and they're not even calling to ask, like, what is your buyer or what is your seller looking for? Like, exactly. what do we do to, 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 to stand above and beyond? So why don't you talk about like what, you know, you know, your process and why, I mean, not all realtors are built the same. It doesn't matter how, what, a, if you've got a pretty smile or a great handshake or if you don't have the actual real world experience and you don't know what it's like to be a listing agent and a buyer agent, you might be missing the boat. So why don't you just kind of touch on that? Well, I, you know, a lot of times now the market is um, because it's so tight. Sometimes you have to send your buyer uh, to open houses on a Sunday afternoon. And if I've got multiple buyers, I, you know, I'm, I'm putting together which houses have open houses and which ones I will show them. But what's happening is I think a lot of a lot of um, buyers agents are just sending their clients out and then I get an offer from somebody and they've never they haven't actually gone to see the house. They haven't even gone to physically say, look, we're going to be writing an offer. I need to come and see the house, which is my first thing. It's like if my buyer says this is the house, I want to get it. The first thing I do is I'm like, let me go see it. Let me double check, because if I have my eyes on it, you know, there's. <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of weird stuff, you know, like years of doing this now, almost 24 years. It's uh, you walk in and go, so do you smell that? Uh, and they're like, no, what? And I'm like, mm, it smells like there's moisture somewhere. Let me just I mean, literally weird stuff that because of years of doing it, you're like, what is that smell? I can't figure it out. But let's, you know, and they're like, oh, my God, I didn't smell anything. It's like, yeah, so that's going to be something we got to check out. How much do you love this house? Let's double check that. Or, I mean, I, I one time had a buyer that walked in, loved the house, right in an offer, right in an offer. And I knew when I walked in, the smell was creosote. Creosote is what they used in old houses in the 30s in L.A. and in Southern California to coat the beams under the house with a tar that they used on railroad ties that would keep termites away, which was probably a good idea. However, the off-gassing of creosote is a cancer-causing agent, which also keeps uh, takes makes infertility in like 13 to 14-year-old girls. And you're going to raise your family in this? I mean, this is real stuff. So I walked in, was like, oh, yeah, it looks good, smells bad. You know, I don't know. And so I said, before, you know, before we go forward, let's just, you do some research on this. And sure enough, they Googled it and said, we can't, we can't buy that house. We have a young daughter. I was like, yeah, this is not your house. So but that's part of it is to also be willing to be the first one to go, you know, great house, not your house. Mm -hmm. um, I also have had, you know, we see a house. It's fantastic. But you know what? I know it's within 500 feet of a freeway and they have a newborn baby. We're not going to buy that house. I won't let them. 
you know? So part of it is also to become the trusted advisor. You also have to just be honest. But my process of, first of all, go see the house. Go see it as an agent. If your agent isn't willing to write, it's like, we saw this house, I'm going to write an offer, but you haven't even seen it. Do you think right. it's okay for them and you're representing them? So number one, I go see the house. I make sure it's okay for them. Then I talk to the agent and I say, what is the priceless part? What's the priceless part? We know they want the number one, they want the highest number, but what would be the part in an offer that would be priceless for your seller? Do they need extra time? Do they need time at the end of escrow that maybe they need an extra week? Do they need another month? My clients are renting. They could give the seller an extra month to move out. Would that help them? Or what's the priceless part? Do they not want to buy a home warranty? I'll cover the home warranty or the buyers, you know, we'll figure that part out. What's the priceless part? How can we help the seller? And many times it's that the buyer up front, the seller says, well, I know there's a termite problem and the buyer would absorb that as one of their inspections. So there's all kinds of things. I mean, the other part in this market now is would it help if the buyer paid the seller's transfer tax? Would that be a little boost up? What about uh, the, the county transfer tax, the city transfer tax? Those can be, depending on the price of the home, that could be a, a quite a large amount of money. But if the buyer says, we'll cover it, sometimes the seller's like, awesome. It's just, And those are the little kind of things that over the years as a listing agent, um, I can tell people, this is what you should do. So then as a buyer's agent, I just change hats and go, you know, this might be a little perk we could give them. Um, in addition to that, you know, you say no loan or appraisal contingency, but I will only offer that if you, Barry, have told me that that's okay. I don't do it. That's why you have a team. If you're a buyer with us, the whole team is like, eh, yeah, we can do it. They're good. Go for it. Right. right. Um, and as far as physical inspection contingencies, a lot of buyers are like, well, let's just let's throw that one out and not inspect the house. And I'm like, no. I'm even as a listing agent, I say to a buyer's agent, they, they if they write no contingencies, I say, no, we're giving you five days to inspect this house. I will not sell a house without you inspecting it. It's ridiculous. Unless it's a teardown and you know that you're going to tear it down and it's a developer, then it doesn't matter. But if you're a buyer owner user, I insist that you take five days and get an inspector who then will tell and a termite with a sewer line inspection and a chimney inspection. If you're going to use the chimney, I almost always do. Those are my four termite, general inspector, sewer line, and a, and a, um, a chimney inspector. And then on top of that, if the general says, you know, there's a roof issue, you might want to get a bid. I have a roofer that I send in with my team. I have a plumber, I have an electrician. And um, those people are my guys. And so one of the other part, parts that I do is once we're in escrow and we get the offer accepted, and we have our inspection day, we try to schedule all the inspections on the same day so the listing agent and the sellers are not inconvenienced having people in and out of their house. And that day when we have all the inspectors come, the buyers come, I bring lunch and I give lunch to all the inspectors and I give lunch to the buyers and the sellers and the other agent because in the old days we would do these big broker opens and give free food out to agents that were just coming by for a sandwich who had no interest in actually buying the house. But they just want to eat lunch, right? People want lunch. They want food. So I give lunch to my inspectors because they know when I call, they're like, oh, we'll do Carol's. We'll do Carol's because she always brings lunch. And if it's later in the day, I bring, you know, protein bars and coffee. Or in the morning, early in the morning, I bring Danish with coffee. Um, so they know it's going to be a bit of a party. But also what that does is it causes the inspectors to all stand in the kitchen and talk to each other. So the termite guy says to the general, did you see that one beam up in the attic on the right hand? No, wait, what? They literally grab the letter and they go look together. The, you know, the sewer line guy will say, yeah, there might be a backup under, you know, the second half of the left side. Really? I didn't see it. They, so they speak to each other on your behalf as the buyer. You have a whole team of people that are experts that are giving their opinions about whether they think this is the right house for you or not. And that's right. all of it is if you've got a desperate younger agent that's newer at the business, maybe they're not young, <laughs> maybe they're old and new, but um, that doesn't have the experience to say, oh, you got to walk away from this if it's not exactly right. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it. So training my team, it's always about, 
you know, yeah. Okay. So the first thing is we get the offer accepted. We're dating. We're just dating this house. You're not going to have sex with this house. You're not going to jump in bed. You're just going to date them. And then once we get through the inspections, like, okay, so now you're, you're, uh, you, you actually are engaged. You're engaged, but until we get all the other things done, you're not married yet. Don't marry. Don't fall head over heels. And part of that is a personality disorder. If you if you really do want to just go crazy and jump in bed with the house, it's like, wait, 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 wait. Just take a moment. Let's see. That's really bad that I just said that, right? I'm sorry. Anyway, okay. we're going to just take it one step at a time. And I believe that that just, and from the beginning, I say that. It's like, look, don't fall in love too easily because maybe you felt like you won this house, but the, if there are any issues, we still need to make sure that the seller is going to be willing to give you a credit back for those things if there's issues that are wrong with the house. The biggest issues I find, Barry, are like water intrusion issues where they might not have known. Lots of sellers had no idea that there was a tiny leak in the upper bedroom and inside the wall of the upper bedroom wall is a mold issue. And so we got to deal with this stuff. You know, we just got to deal with it and say, okay, so you've had a mold issue. You've been living with mold. Uh, would you, I have great mold inspectors. They actually eradicate it and it's all good, but is the seller going to pay for that or is the buyer? Mm -hmm. And in this market, it's not as easy because the seller can say, well, I'll just have the next guy do it if the buyer's not willing to go forward. And I always say, well, you've got to disclose it to the next buyer. You're still going to need to work out this issue. Why don't mm -hmm. we just try to work it out together? Right. And so um, I think I still have the record of a mold inspection that I was able to negotiate for a buyer. $247,000 of mold in a wow. basement of a beautiful home in Los Feliz. The guys had no idea. And it was a major drainage issue that the water was seeping in underneath. And um, we got the seller to pay for it. Wow. Put in new drains. Well, and I, it, it, can't, <laughs> it can't be overstated just how dangerous that is to my oh, life. Yeah. In a past well, life. They want the house. The house got fixed. All of it got corrected. And they they're living there. They've been there probably 14 years now. Yeah. So that's the other part is you can fix these things. They're fixable. It's just you yeah. got to spend the money, but you know you got to be willing to kind of work it out. 